have a very special episode for you today. We are interviewing MCLA star Rory Sanders, the 46-year-old goalie from North Texas, and his sons, Ethan and Wes. It's Thursday, March 7th, joined by always intern Matthew Nessler. I am Dukes Nest. How's your week going? How are you feeling? How you been? Pretty good, Dukes. About to head down to a Cabrini battle tonight. Um, it's been a shitty week weather-wise, but can't control that. You just got to control what you can control. So I can't complain too much. Just watch some good lacrosse this weekend. How about yourself? How was your weekend? How you feeling? Good, dude. No complaints on my end. You know, busy week. Uh, it's that weird time of year for me. People that have been listening, just it's all college across, college basketball, locking in, watching some games. It was an absolute treat for a lacrosse fan this weekend. It was an absolute treat to be a big college basketball fan this weekend. Uh, the Virginia Hopkins delivered. We'll dive into that in a little bit. But – yeah, I heard that you actually we'll, – we'll dive into this really quickly. Let's talk about that. I forgot. We were talking about what we are going to talk about before we hopped on. You got yourself in your first Twitter beef, buddy. Yeah. Um, Widener, assistant coach, didn't like me, doesn't like me. Um, not exactly sure what I did to rub him the wrong way. Uh, I was pretty loud at the game, pretty adamant about my older brother. Uh, shout out McGregor Nessler. He was an All-American goalie at Widener, and I was just letting the Widener boys know, like, hey, you're, you're making the Nestler name look bad. Um, I asked the ref how many flags he had. Um, other than that, no real specific personal chirps. The, the, the AD at Cabrini wasn't a fan. Uh, the refs weren't a fan, and the Widener coach certainly wasn't a fan. I, I left the game for about 15 seconds, returned right back to watch the, the Cabrini beat down, beat the living shit out of Widener. Um, but yeah, I think that guy needs to just watch more film, worry less about what's going on on Twitter. Um, if I'm one of his players, I think he looks like an absolute dickhead. Um, I believe you, you laid into him a little bit on Twitter, so I appreciate you for having my back, but it was just a good Saturday. I mean, it was, it was pouring rain. I was trying to have some fun, but you know, I, I know the rules of chirping. I'm not saying stuff about people's moms. I'm not telling this, this, and that to go fuck themselves. I try to keep it as PG as it can get. I think my loud voice is, you know, is sort of uh, my downfall there. When, when the whole place can hear you, I think it turns a couple heads. But I'll be boots on the ground tonight, ready to go. So I got to ask you this. So the AD of Cabrini doesn't like you? Um, I don't think she doesn't like me. I just don't think she likes that I'm very loud. Um, I tried figuring out what I maybe said that, you know, either rubbed the refs or her or anyone the wrong way. Never got an answer. I think the closest thing we came to it was – I. I said the word shit, uh, but it was directed at a Cabrini player. I said, talk your shit, because uh, they got to talk their shit. They got to have fun. They got to get excited. And, you know, there's no harm in that. I I've played a lot of lacrosse games. I've had some people say some pretty crazy things, some borderline mean things that may have hurt my feelings. But, you know, it's lacrosse. People are going to get chirpy. I certainly wasn't trying to bring it down on those kids who are, you know, already getting laid into up by Cabrini. And, I'm a Widener pride guy at heart. You know, my brother went there. I've always supported him. So it was sort of like family on family crime a little bit. But I wouldn't I wouldn't go back and change anything. So here, yeah, here we think, are. You would think that if the Cabrini AD showed an ounce of pride or like an ounce of fight for you and the lacrosse team sticking up for you that – Cabrini would be playing lacrosse next season, but let's quickly go to our next topic. Is <laughs> I actually just saw this when I was looking up to show the Widener head coach, uh, assistant coach. So, buddy, 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 Joseph Donnelly, I don't think that you just are going to get away with this. We're four minutes into the pod. We're name dropping you. So, if you could see this. It, does it, is that a deleted tweet nest? He, he must have deleted it. I think a couple of his other ones are up, but your your quote tweet sent his tweet into the Twitter sphere pretty pretty big. I, I believe it had seventy thousand views and a whopping one like, and that's from myself. So I'm a gentleman. You tweet at me, I'm gonna like your tweet. It's just the name of the game. Uh, no, I mean just to keep it plain and simple, that guy kind of seemed like a dickhead. He seemed really angry. Uh, didn't say anything about him. Didn't say anything specifically about his players. Just made some general statements and. That's what we do here, Dukes. We we talk lacrosse, good or bad, and you know. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into the main main focus though. With this is like, let's drop this in. Is he was basically going at you for being a D three scrub, 
which Correct. every D3 to lacrosse player, no offense in my opinion, is a D3 scrub. No matter how good or bad you are, no matter what your stats are, like calling someone a D3 scrub, we don't play like high level D1. It's like you're like, even if you play it like fucking like anywhere besides the big, like top teams in D1, you're probably a D3 scrub. It, was like, it wasn't like anything you haven't heard before. It's like a joke, lighthearted. But he started like legitimately going after your playing time and stats, which anybody that can look up your stats, like, were you uh fucking were you Adam Gittleman in there? No. Were you an, an all American honorable mention? Yes. Did you start your graduate year? Yes. Did you have starts in your new year? Yes. So for this guy to go after you for that was like a little a little crazy in my opinion. But besides all that, before we even dive into that, it's like he's saying basically if you don't start, you're a D three scrub. What is that set, saying sending a message to everybody on live? They're like, if you don't play. You're not good. You're a D three washed up athlete. So like, how do you even recruit somebody where they're like, yeah, we don't, we think that like eleven of our players are not D three scrubs, but anyone else on our roster, you suck. You're a D three scrub, just like Matthew Nestler. So that's where I was just like, what the fuck is he trying to do? And he embarrassed himself. I'm sure that like, and look, I didn't tag Widener Lacrosse because like I was trying to get him in trouble. I was trying to tag Widener Lacrosse to just whatever ounce like if there was one recruit that was considering Widener. And they saw that tweet. I hope they got him. That that was my goal. By it, I wasn't trying to get the dude fired. Yeah, dude, I, I agree. His, his tw- like just like he said, he's like, I'm public. You can come at me. This is all public. Yeah, it's all I public. Mean, it's all I'm, in the game, though, right? It's all it's it's all in the game, though. I'm not sure how I'd feel if I was playing the team. One, I just think it's a little ridiculous having your coach get into a Twitter beef with a guy like myself. Um, I was simply just drinking beers, having fun. The other part that you made clear is like. He's kind of talking down on the D3 level like he's not coaching the D3 level. Do I right. think Do I think D3 is a step below D1? Absolutely. Do I think there's unbelievable players in D3? Absolutely. But he, he was a former D1 goalie, so I guess he looks at it like, you know, this is the triple A and, and everyone who plays D3 is a scrub. And I don't want to boost my own horn, but just to be very clear for anyone who doesn't know Matt Nessler and doesn't want to look up the stats – I, I, I played in 50 games. I, I, I played in more games. I've sat on the bench. I, like Duke said, I'll take my honorable mention All-American. I'm nothing without my defense. But he kept saying to me, you were a scrub. And I was just like, buddy, just just look at the stats. He was a goalie. I saved the ball 58% a clip through 50 games. It's like, I don't know what else you want me to do in there. That's, that's, that's typically All-American status. So I don't need to dive into my stats. I think they speak for themselves. But I definitely think it makes him look like an asshole. Um, and even if I was a scrub and never played, I still think he looks like an asshole. I don't think it changes the message he's sending to his team. I, I know some people within the Widener organization, and I know that they kind of thought it was a lost cause trying to argue with him. Um, but, um, yeah, he, he, he gained five followers from the interaction, one of those being me. I'm a gentleman. I, fo- I follow him. But, yeah, so his tweet's still there. He calls me other Nestler, referring to – me being the brother to Mac Nessler because he's a, he's a Widener legend. He's in the Hall of Fame there, two-time All-American. I'll, I'll gas him up. But, um, yeah, it was just – it was an odd interaction. He said, you wanted a reaction out of me. You got it. And I said back, buddy, I, I don't I didn't know you existed until you tweeted at me. I, I, I had no beef with you, and apparently you had beef with my take. Um, you know, he's a, he's a former – he's a former, former Navy guy, so, you know – Hat off to that. Shout out the troops. Shout out everyone in the Navy, Army, Air Force, whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. He's got to find something better to do. Again, maybe just watch more film, get those boys focused, maybe be a bigger voice in that locker room. Uh, Cabrini by 12. It was an absolute shellacking. Tough weekend to be Widener. Tough weekend to be Joe Donnelly. Not a tough week to be a PLL free agent. PLL free agency opened up. That's how. That's what we call a segue right there in the showbiz. But yeah, PLL free agency opened up. Uh, I believe it was Monday, which was really like I'm trying to think. Like, like you know, trades happen, waivers have happened, players sitting for a certain amount of time. Um, the season you could get picked up by other teams. This has all happened, but this is the first time that you had legitimate free agency, and we saw the first couple of big moves. First one of the day was Jules Henningberg. Going from the Redwoods to the chaos, didn't finish there. You saw Serge, Serge Perkovic also go to the chaos, you know, filling in some holes where it, you had uh, Ryan Smith and you had Dane Smith 
both on holdout. And then, and then you, get, you got Kevin Rogers, the Lynchburg legend. The guy that probably scored more goals on Nestler to bring down that 58% save percentage. But, you know, you got either they're just stealing players from the Redwoods left and right. So I just got to ask you, we'll, we'll dive into a couple of the moves later, but <clears throat> what's going on with the Redwoods? Any, uh, any concerns if you're a uh, Redwood supporter? Yeah, you know, I got I got my buddy uh, Coley Kirsch there, so I'm worried he's not going to have the offensive firepower he needs. But at the same time, I saw someone tweet out, you know, the names they still have. You know, you got Pinnell, you got Kirsch, um, they got Tevlin. They, they've got a lot of, you know, good guys. I think maybe expect them to make a move later in free agency. I'm not sure how that all works. I'm not sure, like you said, I'm not sure what Rodgers is going to do. I think – He's kind of been on and off of the PLL rosters. I know he's been real good in the champ series. I think last year he kind of floated on and off of starting lineups and game day rosters, but he's a really good player. Um, so if, if the Redwoods can lock him in and, you know, suit him up every week, I think they could get gel in there and, you know, who knows who they're going to draft. But definitely if you're a Redwoods fan, a little bit of like what the fuck's going on, especially, you know, those first few, those first few names just kind of dropped right off, right off their team straight to other teams and, you kind of start to ask your question, ask yourself, what's what's the plan here? So, but I'm rooting for them. Hopefully, they get some more weapons. I, no beef there. Yeah, what this told me more than anything, I think, is maybe not the locker room, but when do you start looking at the decline they've had over the past couple of years? You know, not not to say someone's not a great lacrosse mind, but when we start questioning that, I mean, you know, when the same person sends messages over and over again. I, it might not get through to the players, you know, it might work for the first couple seasons, but then you get tired of the same message or, you know, that happens in sports. It happens with coaches. It doesn't mean you're a bad coach, but man, I don't know if it's a change of scenery with the players or if Matt needs to change the scenery with a different team. But I, I thought that um, all those players wanting to leave was, uh, was a little bit strange for me to see uh, an absolute, like just retreat it was crazy yeah. but some other some other surprising ones tim troutner also shout out tim troutner i forgot about him you know he led them to a championship game i thought he was one of the best goalies in the league at one point kind of had a decline jack jack kelly stepped in but now you look at that jack they got jack kelly and drake porter the atlas do what does that do for jack and cannon's future where, where is he looking you know he's he might, for my money like every single year in the league he's one of the best players in the league besides last year all star could have been the, the argument two years ago. He's one of the best goalies in the world, like maybe top two goalie in the world. So, so to see him off the like to see him now struggling to make a roster, like you know, a backup role, like what the fuck is that? Um, I do think they should probably keep Kim Cannon on the Atlas. I mean, I would. I think I mean, I I'll just say it, I think he's better than both Troutner and Drake Porter, but you know, I don't know. I guess you gotta kind of look into the future. But yeah, some other moves that were made around. Uh, Jake Richard from the Atlas. He went to the Water Dogs. Thought that was a great fucking signing to get a captain to switch squads. It's pretty absurd, but they just add to that fucking loaded uh, defensive midfielder spot. Then you had Colin Heacock, uh, Maryland legend, going to the uh, Terps. You know that fucking him and Rambo are about to tear it up. Best buddies. Um, that that was a uh, powerful move. I thought. I think that's a great fit. Just makes way too much sense. Um, any thoughts on any of those moves or not much? I I love uh, I love Heacock going to the Whip Snakes. Um, I think it's funny that Maryland sort of connection they have there, and I think him and uh, Rambo, like you said, are going to be real good together. I'm not sure if we touched on it yet, but the cannon scooping up uh, Garrett Apple, that's that to me was honestly like the steal of the day. Um, was about to, was about to get there. Yeah, that was um, Apple to the Redwoods as well. I mean, leaving the Redwoods as well. Just joining up with uh, like like just Cav and that and that defense down there and what like that tough mentality that we saw them build upon in Cannons. Now you're adding Gar Garrett Apple and that mentality, and you got him with Jack Healty down there. Yep, I yeah. think I think they might have, if I read the stat correctly, <clears throat> the top three leaders in turnovers from last season. I believe it was uh, Apple, Raw, Herman, and uh, Raw. Yeah. Um, so to have those guys, again, playing alongside guys like Jack Kilty, like Jack Kilty's a weapon out there. Um, honestly, probably doesn't even get the shine he deserves. And then obviously we got Kirsty anchor down. So I, I'd watch out for that Cannons D to be, you know, one of the best, one of the best in the league this year. Yeah, and I did. also know that uh, they just signed Zach Tucci, which, you know, UNC faceoff guy, athlete, very fucking athletic. I think that 
<clears throat> that was a good move because there's no more long poles with the face-offs. Uh, I know the PL made some rule changes to that. You know, some high hits, some like step downs, some intricate shit that like Dan and Rusty could probably break down better than I can. You know, I'll, I'll probably watch the game and be like, that's a bullshit call. And someone's like, that's the absolute correct call. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't read the rules when they put it out on March 2nd. Sorry. Um, but yeah, a lot of things we're moving around right now in the PLL world. Um, going going to that, like Water Dogs are still looking for uh, a head coach. I think Joe Spelina's name got thrown out there, Stephen Brooks. I'm still vouching for DiNapoli. Just going through like their timeline, like Ronan Jacoby, somebody that played really well for the Archers in the Champ Series, getting a one-year deal with the Atlas. I think that's very cool to see. You know, legit, guy. Yeah, didn't play a game last year. Redwoods made a power move by keeping Ricky Mays on through 2025. I think that, you know, anybody trying to compare him to that Chris Hogan situation, like I think Ricky's going to be at, at the very worst. It's still with Chris Hogan. Like they're just such supreme athletes. Like they're playing in yeah. the fucking National Football League that – you know, just sticking them with a stick and like having them be dig middies. And like Ricky got to play with Virginia last year, got to play in time. So I think that's a fantastic signing for the uh for the Redwoods. <clears throat> but yeah, that's basically the major news I want to say right now. Like you got like homecoming passes coming out. Reed Bowering is the last move early of the day that I saw. He's going from the archer scored a goal in the championship game and now he's gonna be playing for the Atlas where I think he'll have more opportunities. But um yeah. A lot going on in the PL for you. I think it's very exciting to see. Uh, very cool to see. I, it, it finally feels like official, and I didn't realize how cool it would be to see unfold throughout the week. I agree. I think it was uh, <clears throat> given uh, sort of given that same vibe as like when free agency opens up in the in the, the big four sports. Uh, seeing big names move around was really cool, and I'm just excited to sort of see that domino effect keep going on in in years to come, and maybe even the rest of free agency. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll see a couple more moves. Yeah, and then, you know, switching over gears. By the way, forgot to tell you guys in the beginning. I'll probably add this to the intro. If you're listening to this right now, it's probably going to probably gonna switch to the intro right now. But we do have MCLA goalie, all-star, Rory Sanders, and his sons, Coach Ethan and midfielder Wes, joining us on the program. Um, just, you know, talk about what it's like, the dynamic between playing with your son, getting coached by your son, being the dad figure, being the – the goalie, the leader of the team, but how's it been like playing against uh, opponents and not know who he is? Um, just a cool story, cool interview. Just kind of wanted to break it down with him, just a light, light talk. Um, but yeah, we're we, we're recording this before we interview him, but I can already tell you that it's the the top 150 interview that I've ever done. So uh, excited to get to talk to them, Rory Pops and uh, Wes, Ethan. Excited to talk to all of them, but yeah. We'll talk a little bit about – let's talk about last weekend's games, then we'll get you to the interview, and then we'll finish it up previewing some games. Sweet. So, yeah. Go on. No, I got you. Let's okay, hit it. Cool. Yeah. So, look, huge <clears throat> weekend for upsets. Starts off Friday. Penn beats Duke. Friday night madness. What were your thoughts? I was, <clears throat> I was all over Penn, plus seven, was rooting for him heavy. As that game went on, you kind of just saw them taking over and you got that feeling like, you know, Duke just might not be able to pull this one off. Uh, the goalie for Penn, um, unbelievable. He was seeing the rock so well. And that Penn offense was humming. They were riding the ball. They were causing turnovers. I think at one point they had five goals on five turnovers, maybe before halftime. Um, and that's the difference in the game. I think clearing in the cross is sneaky, one of the biggest aspects of the game. It's a little bit like special teams in football and if you don't clear the ball well it's going to bite you in the ass and if you clear the ball at 95 100 percent a clip uh teams are gonna have a hard time getting like cheap goals on you and not that they were cheap goals from Penn, but <clears throat> just hustle plays and i think they just outworked duke that night and then duke certainly took it personally and took it out on princeton the next week next game they played yeah brennan just got absolutely fucking clamped i've never seen anything like that um right. yeah lavelle uh i don't know i forgot his first name I want to say it's like Brendan Lavelle, but Lavelle, the defender, was fucking a stud. Just absolutely matched up with him phys physically, uh, physically imposing. Just, I've never seen Brennan not, you know, I don't want to say out physical, but just found like somebody that just like to their core was just able to just like match his size and speed and take like take away checks. 
So I, I thought that was probably my player of the game easily. But you want to talk about, again, a guy that I think is the most underrated player in the country, but underrated midfielder in the country, Aiden Tananza, literally almost single-handedly brought them back into that game. Four goals in, like, what seemed like five minutes or all in the f- fourth quarter. Absolute studs stinging them. I really thought that he, he was Serge Perkovic out there in, like, the 2013 uh, Final Four, the 2014 Final Four. Absolutely incredible. But, um, yeah, Duke falls 14 to 12 to Penn. Am I worried about Duke? No. No. Are you? Couldn't be, couldn't be less worried. They are an absolute wagon. It's really hard to win every game. And, again, I think people kind of slept on Penn a little bit. I think Penn's a real good lacrosse team. So That's, that's the thing. Is like, okay, are they sleepy on Penn? Like, are people sleepy on Penn? Probably. Is Penn going to be in the Final Four? In my no. opinion, probably not. Jeez. Are they good enough to win against good teams? Yes. Do those good teams have to match up the intensity? Yes. I think Penn just wanted it more. Like, when the, the hungry dog runs faster. Oh, yeah. It's the same thing we kind of saw with Georgetown last week against Notre Dame. Uh, we'll dive into that game in a little bit. We'll go through the Saturday game, Friday, Saturday games first. But um, I'm not worried about Duke. I think Penn played fucking phenomenal. I uh, legitimately, for right now, I think they have the best defender in the country from what I saw. Um, but yeah, I thought Zawada played well in that game. I thought that Denanza played well in that game. And then the same night that Princeton beat UNC 15 to 9, kind of put a shellacking on them. I was a little surprised to see that. <laughs> um, not much really to take away from that, I guess, in my head right now. UNC's dead. Or I'm going to say, like, arguably, like, <clears throat> watch out for Brushy on the hot seat. And that's going to be crazy to say. But really hasn't made some made some moves in the past couple of years. If if UNC falls off this year, I want to be the first to say Brushy's done. That'll be my take on the year on UNC. Because I think the talent's kind of there. But I, I think that he's someone that could be on the hot seat. I love it. Um, <clears throat> for that Princeton game, I just think that uh, that freshman uh, Nate Kabiri, Kabari, mm-hmm. so good. He he. Uh, the only other kid that made me feel like this that made me feel like that this year was Hunter Chavet in that opening game. That kid was fucking laying missiles past that goalie, low to high, high to high, from up top, from the side. It was raining. The nets, the nets were soaked. Uh, that thing was splashing when it went in. And I just love, like, when a freshman comes onto the scene and just starts fucking – you can see them feeling it, and they're like, oh, shit, I have it. And I think it's really cool to watch, so shout out to him. I think he not only supplied a lot of juice, but a lot of stats as well. So shout out him from Princeton. Let's dive into my game of the weekend. Hop, Virginia. Hop is so bad. I don't think I've ever been more wrong about a human being in my life than I was about Pete Millen and killing the Hopkins program. Um <laughs> But I, 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 I kind of took that back when Crawley came in, but I'll, I'll be a man of my word. I was fucking so wrong about Hopkins. It, it, it is absolutely crazy. Uh, they won the Doyle Smith Cup. It's crazy to think where, Hop, where my, like, brain would be on Hopkins if they just beat Denver. It, I think they'd be undisputed one. I don't even Well, they would be undisputed one. Well, like, well, they would easily where be undisputed be? one. But – I still think Virginia is the best team in the country. It's crazy to say. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Uh, I think just like it's like sort of like looking at teams. You know, Virginia has like the fullest team in my opinion, but at the same time, you know, that's the beauty of lacrosse is like any Saturday, right? A team that is you know a, a little bit below them can just come in, smack them in the mouth, and Virginia. You know, had control of that game for parts of it. Then Hop took control, and you know, at, at the end of the game, you know, only one team's going to walk away with a win, and it was those Blue Jays on Saturday. It must have felt good for those guys to go down into Virginia. That's not an easy environment to play in. You know, I'm sure the place was absolutely rocking yeah. on, the, yeah. on the field. Um, so that's a huge win. Um, but I, I'm kind of with you. I think Virginia still might be, for 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 my uh-huh. money, best team in the country. I have one concern, one major concern, which I thought was gone this year, that is fully back. And it's something that Hopkins has really good. It's Hopkins has an elite goaltender. Like, you know what Chase Erland brings to the table, which I think, you know, can be and behind that really good defense that I think Hopkins has. Do I think from the, like the field positions, like defense, attack, midfield, do I think Virginia is better than uh, – Hop, yes. 
I'm not sure about Nunes. I'm still not sure about him. He, I, I think he was the reason that they probably didn't go, go all the way last year. Like, I think that he's kind of their own kryptonite. And I, not everyone could be Alex Road. No, yeah. like, not, you, you don't need to be Alex Road to win a national championship. But, like, it, there's just some times that he plays where he looks so fucking good. And there's other times he plays where he's so fucking bad. And I, th- I think that against Hopkins, he played really fucking bad. Yeah, you as a as a goal, you got you you got to be able to have your highest moments be real high, but it's about maintaining those lows. So I know, I got to take a, a closer look at his game and you know see where I stand on that take. But if if there's a kryptonite on your team, you don't want to be your goalie because a bad uh, when your bad day is bad, that's that's when it can get ugly real fast. So you know, hopefully he can figure it out and. Those Virginia boys can get buzzing, you know. People were asking me, is there a crease dive curse on McCabe Millen? You know, he comes on the crease dive and they get their first loss. I, I heard through the grapevine that you said yes, and I said, fuck no. Um, Who told you that? Uh, I think it was uh, Ghetto Gary Gate, I think it was. Shout yeah, out Ghetto Gary Gate. It's, it's, it's always the crease, dive, it's the crease dive curse. But even like yesterday, that got broken. Um, so congrats to Mullen. I think he had like five goals in five seconds. I think that he heard <laughs> from me like he disappeared against uh, Hopkins. So there's that. And let's just move on to so, some other bigger stories. Just get catch get, gets moving along because I'm kind of rushing for time in a little way. Let's do it. Um, yeah, we got 20. Yeah. NJIT still undefeated. Wagon. Frank the Tank interaction with um, Nick Alcello was so funny. Did you see that at all? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm a, I'm a still an Acello supporter. <clears throat> I think eventually there's going to have to be an Oklahoma in me and him's future. It's the only way we're going to be able to settle this. He's a Cabrini hater, but what he does for the game is is great. So I'm still in Acello's corner. Uh, but I saw the interaction. I loved it a lot. Lax Twitter was saying this is the collab we've been waiting for. It'd be it'd be fun to see Frank the Tank hop on the NGIT bandwagon. I just worry he hops on and they they just start losing. And if that happens, we might have to do some serious research on who uh, who Frank the Tank's rooting for, given his uh, history of rooting for teams. Yeah, so Nick gives his, like, top ten, and Frank's just like, NJIT has a good lacrosse team. And Frank was so confused when I was talking to him about it. But he, he's a gem. He's one of my favorite people that I work with. Um, yeah, and then Penn State and Yale. That was a crazy one. I don't know if you, you caught that one at all, but like Penn State, I gotta find the box score. They were down, I want to say, seven goals. They were down seven, brought it back to like three, then they went back down like five at one point. So they were down. It's not like they were down seven and they rallied back and just sort of erased it. It was like a long, treacherous, like we score a couple, all right, we're back, and then boom, like Yale pumps in a couple and you're back down five. Um, to see the way that game ended was unreal. I mean, just Penn State, you know, maybe taking some things personally. Maybe they're saying, listen, we were final fucking 14 last year. We were one call away from potentially playing for a natty. Like, if we don't care what anyone says, we're just going to play our game and it's going to work. And I was all over Yale. I-, I think they have a powerful offense with, you know, Matt Brandau. Um, but holy shit, uh, Penn State sort of, you know, proved me wrong. And shout out those boys. That's a it's a fun ass good win to come back like that. Yeah, I think TJ Malone is like, absolutely filthy. Um, yep. Yeah, J- Jack Frankion. Like I thought by the end of last year, he was one of the better goalies in the country. And I was actually surprised to see that Jared Paquette. Like the, like I think was he? No, 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 no. Wait, wait. I don't want to say anything dumb. <laughs> I don't. No, he wasn't. No, no, no. I was gonna say that he he like I was gonna be like that was star. I thought he won the national championship in 2019 <laughs> or whatever 2018. Um, well, no, he he was on the uh, team USA like U18 team with Brennan or whatever like this summer. But yeah, Penn State hell of a fucking comeback. Um, that was one of the I think one of the more low key good games. Just got like hidden behind UVA Hopkins for how good that game was. Um, I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. George, Georgetown 
beat Brown eleven five. But we gotta get Lark and Kemp on the show to talk. We yeah. talk to talk Brown lacrosse. I mean, I almost got him on today. It was so last minute. We just threw this together. But yeah, Georgetown. Brown is in the gutter. We need Lark and Kemp to pull them out. We need to see. Maybe it's because he's on the West Coast, but um, we, we need yeah. to figure that out. Yeah, I saw, him. With, I yeah. saw him saying he might need to come back east. Uh, I, saw, I saw that too. Something's, yeah. something's, yeah. Wrong there. something's wrong with Brown. Hate to see it, but the show goes on. So on to the next one. North Carolina beat Penn 13 on, got revenge for Duke, which is weird. Then Duke got revenge for North Carolina, beat Dukes. Uh, be Princeton seventeen to eight. Notre Dame. Um, this will be our last recap for right now. We'll do uh, Notre Dame beat Maryland fourteen to nine. Just absolute bounce back game. Faison is so good with Faison. They have the Notre Dame football boys out there. He's just the best athlete. I think Brown transferred Devin McLean. So fucking good. So dangerous uh, to add to this team. They're back. Notre Dame's yeah. back. What do you what, what, where where you stand? Maryland's a hard team to beat the shit out of for four quarters, and you know I, I watched ninety percent of the game early. I think Maryland struck first, and then uh, Notre Dame got up like three or four goals. Maryland made it a little close, and then as time went on, Notre Dame just kept that lead. You know, it was never a one-two goal game in in the fourth. It felt like Maryland couldn't strike to make it that close, and. Every time Maryland scored, the, the the Kavanaugh's and that Notre Dame offense and just kept scoring. And I love seeing Faison out there uh, just, just fucking ru- – he, he just runs straight by everyone. He's so much more athletic. He's so much faster. And I can guarantee you if, if the Notre Dame football team's on, on boots on the ground, that kid's going to show up because that's just automatic juice. That's like having, you know, your high school buddy show up to a college game. It's like having, you know, 20 members of your family there. But – those football guys, they're big time at Notre Dame. They're the stars on campus, even with the lacrosse team win the national championship. Football runs America. So to have them show up for their boy and even the rest of the squad, that's got to be a lot of fun. And it looks like they loved it. So shout out to Notre Dame boys. Yeah, they're on DraftKings right now, plus 425 to win the national championship. Same with Virginia. I, I think that uh, either of those bets right now would are probably the two that I take. And I like both of those teams. And, and surprisingly, if you're a big hop guy, Plus nine hundred tied with Maryland to uh, to to get some to get some nets cut down some nets in Memorial Day weekend. So you could grab them at plus nine hundred. Uh, Duke is the favorite at plus three eighty. Are we looking potential like Hopkins Memorial Day weekend? Like when do we start discussion discussing that? Like alarm, even just getting them back in the Final Four. I I'd have to look up when the last time they were there is, but it's, it seems like it's twenty fifteen. What what year? 2015, I think. That's it's almost a decade. So uh, I'd love to see Hop back. I think lacrosse is better when Hop is at the top. I mean, I think people. Are, I think people have started that chatter. I don't think that that's like not a secret. Yeah, I don't think that's a secret. I think that's 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 out there. That's been the, the talks before the season as well. I think that the, if there's going to be a year that Hop gets back to the final four, it's this year. But before that, it's been 2008. So one since 2008 is fucking crazy. Um, but if anybody – I think this team's as good as anybody to uh, to get there. It's just what's your schedule? What's the, How does the bracket break your way? Yeah. If you get matched up with Notre Dame or Virginia, that's not, that, that sucks. <laughs> you know, because yeah. one of these teams is going to be like the, the five. You could get like Army. There's teams that are like there that are trying to look for that fourth spot at Penn State. So, yeah, I mean, is it is – it, all right, here's the interview with Rory Pop Sanders and his sons, Ethan and Wes. Thank you guys for taking your time. I know a lot of people want to hear your guys' story. I know we were just chatting a little bit backstage, but um, how's your guys' week going? How's it been since the lacrosse world kind of introduced to you, to you guys? Oh, uh, yeah. How, why don't you start? It's, it's been pretty good. Um, the, the fame hasn't really done anything except for publicize our team, uh, which is really great. Uh, we're always trying to grow the sport in our community. So um, it's just doing some good things. I think we've had like two or three new players since our story's kind of gotten out there. Yeah. Uh, so the publicity is really, really doing some good stuff. Um, in terms of playing with my family, it's it's nothing really different from playing with the team. Um, I've always kind of just listened to what Ethan told me from a defensive standpoint so it's kind of it's kind of just the same thing right 
Uh, and then my dad in goal, it's, uh, it's good to see how, how good he's getting. Um, ah, I, didn't, that's I, didn't nice. really, I didn't, I didn't really expect too much out of it. Yeah. yeah but, even better. Yeah. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, he's doing better than expected. So, you know, everything's up and Here's we'll thing. see where it's going. I don't want to be good for a 46 year old. Cause I hear that. I'm like, ah, oh, he's pretty good for 46. I'm like, no, I just want to be pretty good. Right. Yeah. I'm not asking to be like the guy. Right. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to get highlights like, and during the season, that's not the thing. But if he thinks highly of me, that's all I really need. Right. It's like, this yeah. guy thinks I'm good. This guy thinks I'm good um, or good enough. Right. The coach says, Oh, you're doing great. But I think he just says that to boost my confidence sometimes. Like, well, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, Telling someone they're doing good always boosts the confidence. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> but like it was a pretty good save percentage against Texas State over the weekend. So that one hurt. That was hurt. That was um. I always that game does not reflect how well the game was played. Like the score itself. Yeah, yeah of course. Like, and it's so like if you watch, it's on YouTube. If you go to Texas State, I don't want to plug their YouTube channel, but. You know, <laughs> I know free ads. If you, watch this, if you watch the level of like where we're at, you know, we have eleven men on the field. Like we have one, we have one we're on one standby. Sub. We have well, one sub, and we had ten guys, and we played four quarters. Right? Damn. Um, they had what? 20, I guess they're D one team. They were D one. They had at least twenty. I think they had like twenty. Twenty seven. Yeah, probably like twenty. They were they were pretty stacked, and they were nice. I would say, as far as I felt like the guys that were. They were watching me. Were were and talking to me. Were were pretty nice about the game, but they were. I think we got a lot of compliments on just how much grit we had to play. And uh, the the game was much closer in three quarters. In that fourth quarter, I mean, how how hard can you run, right? This guy's puking. Uh, the other guy's puking. We're just like falling over. I think one of the the guy got like Colin got tripped. He just laid there at like fourth quarter. He's like, it's over. <laughs> buzzer goes off, and it was like I did have a buzzer beater though. I saved the buzzer beater. Oh, there we go. There you go. That was the <laughs> highlight, right? So, yeah, that's the thing. That that's what I, you know. I would give. Uh, so I never, I never played, right? So, like, is I this was, your first year playing? I, yeah, I, I like. I played like seven weeks. Like, what is it? January sixteenth. So you. So wait, hold on. So you just you didn't just like. You wouldn't play when you were like in your twenties or even like an over thirty-five league. You uh, legitimately nope. got up from being a dad, learned how to play goalie, and you posted like <laughs> I saw the stat like a fifty-eight percent save percentage the other day. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> mine. Yeah, that is that is more <laughs> impressive that's than anything off. else. Tip the cat. That, that is. That is. <laughs> so you know, okay. Like, okay, so here's the dads on the sidelines as I grew up watching. He's played since he was really eight, but nine officially, 10, 11. And okay. so I'm a dad on the sidelines for that many years, right? And every dad was like, you should have done this. You should have done this. And all these little like, armchair stuff. I'm like, why did you do this? And they're yelling at their kid. I'm like, I thought I did pretty did, I thought I did pretty good. I'm like, I don't even understand the rules, right? I don't yeah. know what's going on. I know they run this way. They run this way. So you start learning the sport over 10 years, right? So then you get in there like, dad, well, I would have done this or I would have done this. Well, I think I'm the only dad that's actually saying, you know what? I will do this. Like I was like, I would have done this. Okay, I'll go do it. Like this wasn't the goal, and I I think that the way that Barstool wrote the headline was great for clicking, right? And I was like, props props to Barstool for making a good click. I did enroll in school to play, (laughs) right? So just to be for clarity, I enrolled in school. He said, "Wouldn't it be funny if you played?" And I said, "Yeah, it would be funny if I played." He laughed, I laughed, and they handed me a goalie stick. So that's pretty much how that happened, right? Oh, yeah. that's, that's a smart move. That's a smart move too. Take the take the position that uh, you don't have to run a lot because you said yeah, if Wes is throwing up, yeah, if Wes is throwing up in the Texas heat. Yeah, yeah it, it was not designed the way it played out. So it was just kind of like a happenstance. I'm like, hey, what did you say? Huh? So he said, come try it out. See what you think. Is, so, is there anything, Ethan, how's it been for you, like, coaching your dad? And, like, has there ever been, like, a moment where, you're, like, you're almost, like, what's the relationship there when you have to be like, hey, yeah, you, like, you have to do this or a yeah. teaching moment? How is it teaching your dad the game? Don't lie. Well, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, he's got his own goalie coach. 
So I'm not teaching them how to play goalie. But yeah, right. when it comes down to like a clear where it is my field house, I just I, I just straight up tell them like my my goal is to win this season. I don't I don't care who is on like in that helmet. Yeah. I'm telling them that like that they're doing it wrong. So he is pretty direct. Yeah. And Wes, so, what about you? Like, have you um, have you snuck one by your dad in practice and like given him a little no, chirp never. or like what's? Oh yeah, I, always, always. <laughs> Whatever, that doesn't happen. Every every shot gets past him. Well, besides the ones where it like hits him in the shin or something, but I guess that's a good save. Might hurt him a little bit. It's, but... u- it's ugly. My dream of saves are the ones I'm watching through Instagram. So like those saves that are like off my body. I don't. Know, you can't. I don't know if you can see the bruise. Oh yeah. But. Like they're all over my body, and the coach is like, "Those are saves." I'm going, and I know on the stat book it's like saves, but like it, I want to save them the way that they're saving them. But I remember I've been playing since January 16th. Like, and I was like, Roy, "Well, I got a question for you. I played goalie my whole life. Duke's played goalie as well. How have you been? You bringing up the bruises? How much does that ball hurt?" Uh, when it hits you, and I know you're trying to make the clean saves with your stick, but sort of walk me through how you're dealing with all those bruises. Is it is it starting to add up, or, or are you kind of brushing them off? That's what – okay, so he's not telling the whole truth about coaching, right? We we carpool – so we don't live on campus, right? So I, okay. we live right outside of campus. And, the, and what I – we carpool to practice – um, and we're early, right? So we're early there and we're, we're usually last ones to leave. And that's the way it's always been with these two. We're always last ones to leave and first ones to get there. And when we, the, the, we don't get really get to practice together much unless we're doing like six on six or something, but the rides to practice and the rides home, um, are always different. There are sometimes they're quiet, sometimes they're contentious. Right. And so I never be, I'm, I'm not really one to like, talk about that type of thing at the coach like i don't want to be the cancer in the in the team right so at home i don't have anyone else to talk to but the one that's the coach <laughs> so like, but there's no audience so I, and so one of them i was just pretty frustrated like why am i just being thrown in a cage and not mm-hmm. being taught what to do and i was pretty frustrated and like i'm just airing everything out <laughs> like don't tell coach charlie all i want to do is just like i feel like the efficiency of my training is is not there. Like, why am I running laps? Like, I ran like we did sprints. They made me do sprints. <laughs> I have to do sprints with everybody else. Yeah. Like, and I'm, and it's. I guess it could be good, for, you know, for for me health wise. But I'm like, I need shots. Like, I need a lot of shots. And this happened right before our game against UTD. Is like I was getting pretty nervous leading up to the game because I've never played in a game. And I'm like, I don't feel like I'm prepared. And as and you, you get as you get older, you feel like preparation is much more important than than anything. It's like I, if I'm prepared, then I feel comfortable in the situation. I felt a lot of anxiety because I didn't feel prepared. But they were so the next the next practice, and I know that he did this. And I didn't say I said don't say anything to ever anybody. The next practice, Coach Charlie and Coach Luke literally just had me stand in the cage. And that nest, I don't know if this happened to you. I literally said, stand there, put my hands on my back, and they just launch balls at me for like 20 minutes without any, like no protection. They said, they said, no flinching. <laughs> and they were not. So like, and as, like, as a goalie, right? As a goalie, they can't, they, my goalie coach can't shoot. <laughs> like, Charlie has rippers, and like he can kind of most of the time get them where they're supposed to go, but they're supposed to be missing me. But go, like char- my goalie coach is like whack, whack, whack all over me, and I'm like, dude, how do you hit me now? But two days ago, you couldn't even hit the cage, <laughs> and you're like, hit the net, dude. hit the net, like, and so that was like, so instinctively, and, and you guys would know, like, I want to. It's not that I I want to move in front of the ball, but my, your mind says move out of the way of the ball. Yep. So if I'm moving my stick and not my body, right? You know, move your you, you step into the ball, you move into your body, and like I'm not doing that. So and I still it comes up, but it was like so. This is what happens when your son's the coach. You ride home, you blah 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 whatever, and you're just frustrated, and then he tells the coaches, and the next day I get punished. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what happens when. Yeah, so that's a true story. Would, that's a true Hollywood story with Charlie Murphy. Yeah. But, 
I would I would love nothing more than to uh, make my dad run sprints. But I guess like a general question for all of you, just like going around, what's been the best part for each of you? Like getting like you know having your brother as a coach, dad as a teammate, vice versa for everybody. What's been the um, what's been the best part? I mean, I've always kind of played with him, so it was, it's kind of and. It's all. It's always had a little bit of coaching in it too. So like, it's it's really sure. no different between yeah. us. And I mean, I guess now being the coach, I mean, like I said earlier, it's I really don't think about it. Coaching my dad, I just I'm just there to to try to win. So like, no I, emotions at all. When we're out in the like, field, I nothing. I go like even whenever I was playing last year, it was like I go blank. Like I'm just. I'm just trying to like play lacrosse and win. I wish he would play That's... too, but you know, that would be, I mean, we could literally like clear assist goal. Would be yeah. like, we did we, that in practice we, the other day. Yeah. It was a clear to Ethan and you ran down and that yeah. was, yeah, it was like, so Ethan, man. Ethan, Ethan, do you suit up during practice? As, as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I absolutely love playing. I love so that. what are the numbers looking – what are the numbers at North Texas? Because I think you guys – you were talking about – I played MCLA lacrosse. Um, yeah. I played in – I forget the – UMLC. So, like, that was, like, uh, Minnesota Duluth. There's D2. I played for Dayton. So what's one thing that you guys want everyone to know about MCLA lacrosse, playing club lacrosse, North Texas lacrosse? If you could just get the word out there, what would you uh, want the people to know? I mean, UNT lacrosse, like, we're we're always getting a lot better. Right now, we only have 13 guys. Uh, two, we had 15, but two, uh, two are gone. Like, I think one one of them's not able to uh, like join because he joined late, and then oh. another injury. But so we have 13 guys. I wish, I wish <laughs> we had more. <laughs> but I mean, that's what's great about this publicity. I, I I want UNT Lacrosse to be out there because we are a good program. And we're always growing. We're playing these big schools. Like we play Texas State, Rice. Uh, we're going to be playing Baylor uh, in a couple 17. weeks. That you know, one's going to be on a local so news. It's, too. Oh, wow. It's like we're not, it's like we're not like as good as these northern teams. Texas. But like it's, it, Texas it's still lacrosse. Texas lacrosse. Yeah. But like, we're, we're trying our best to grow the sport. We would like trying to get as many people out. Our practice tonight is at a high school game that we're going to watch. So, you know, to be an ambassador for the sport here, my my opinion with MCLA is I I didn't know anything about the MCLA till he was a freshman and you know, go, he went to UNT. He graduated from UNT and then when he started playing, they were playing together the last two years. And I I really think that you have more um involvement from student athletes in MCLA, then you're, then it's not as restrictive. Uh, so at Texas state, we played, they, they had a lot of kids on their team. Um, but not everyone there was like up to par. Right. But they're like wanting to be involved. Um, I got, um, I got a text. It was a text or DM from somebody said that they got phone calls at their school to come interested in the programs because they saw the story that I had, they, cause wow. we're playing them, right. They didn't even know there was a program at their school. Right. So now they know there's a program. So if UNT and it can be an ambassador for the sport, not only at the college level and seeing other people saying, Hey, you can be involved and not have to like, I mean, I know under other programs, like what, what like, um, like Rhode Island, they're probably going to be like a tryout, right? And I can kind of get that. But down here, man, we just want kids to be involved, you know? I mean, we have a we have a couple of guys who never touched a stick before, like since. I mean, the first time they touched a stick was in fall. Yeah. And we're yeah. like we're working with. They're getting better. Yeah, they're getting a lot better. One of them. Uh, I mean, everyone touches the field with our numbers. <laughs> yeah. So like, it, it's very important. Like, yeah, if you're new, we're getting you up to. Yeah, tell up them, to like, the level to play. I am nicer about it with the team. About my coaching style is much more of a dad, you know. Like, ah, yo, you'll get him next time, you know. He's yeah, not yeah. nice at all. <laughs> I, he, he's captain of the. He, he's one. We have two captains, Colin and West, and he's captain. And there, he, he, 
I get the tough love, right? And as, as younger, I would probably have done the same thing. And he does a good job kind of uh, with instruction and, and getting these guys up to speed, right? I think we have a good chance of, um, one, I think we have an excellent chance of what our numbers were last year as far as our stats go. But um, this year, um, it's going to be good. I I like playing with them. I mean, even yeah. with our, even with our, like, I would say probably three quarters of the team either hasn't, either hasn't touched, like, been around lacrosse at all in their life or haven't played since middle school. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so, and, and I'm expecting the rest of the season to, I'm expecting to win out the rest of the season. Like the, like these guys have gotten <laughs> yeah, so yeah. much better. It's true. Like if y'all watch the Texas state game and see how well they played, it was then watch the uh utd and it's like yeah we won that game but i would tell our our game against texas state we played better than the game that we played utd in my yeah. i think it's i think it's awesome what you guys do because one it's like getting like just in texas overall compared to like where we're from in like the northeast just getting the name of lacrosse out there but like even the, like that aside having to get interest from people that gave it up in middle school and now they're like re re fell in love with the game when they come to college or getting someone to fall in love with the cross for the yep. first time as they like step onto campus and you guys being the ambassadors for them or like not even the yeah you guys are ambassadors i was gonna say like i think that's a testament to like what you guys are doing out there at uh, unt and it's like very impressive yeah, so we love it congrats they, to all of you they drink the kool-aid young uh, mostly because I, as again, going back to dad, I was like, man, I don't know. Like, let's, let's wait till your, your football career starts in like junior high. Right. And this was the story. Like he started football at seventh grade. We'd already been playing lacrosse. He comes off the field at the end of the football season. He's like, that's really, it's, it's really just not as fast it's too as slow. I'm used to. <laughs> yeah, it's too right. Slow. It's kind of boring. And like the work and out here, Texas is Texas football is yeah. a thing. He was like, you know, I'm a stud at, at you know, in lacrosse. And I love it. And he loved it so much. This is like the only they they eat, drink, sleep it, right? And we mm -hmm. were always told, like, you know, our the coaches out here were like, you know, the guys up north, they they sleep with the stick, you know, and they they always have a stick in their hand. They're cradling everywhere, and and we're like, okay, yeah, we get it. But they literally like everywhere they go, Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, all this around, it was all the cross stuff. So like, and that's like, and it's my money what we're spending on that <laughs> stuff. And so and then lots of lots of sunburns, lots of wind burns, lots of all that stuff. And so. You know, battling, you know, what was it? It was a California club that was battling. Was it Berkeley or it was battling on field space that they got canceled and they were dealing with that. That was a story I, I read not too long ago. And it's like, you know, it's the same story over and over again all across the country, right? That this sport that I would believe is probably one of the best sports in the country to be involved in. And, and they're still battling against like just having the space. And I'm sure that's the same thing with all club sports, right? They're not taken seriously. They're they're almost you know I've been told it's like oh you're playing intramural and like you know I think intramural is just kind of you you kind of get together and you play against each other in at school. But I said this is really an organized uh, thing, right? Some. We're playing for yeah. something. It's like and it, yeah. and I think on like and I know Wikipedia is not like the, the go to for like you know good information, um, but they said it's like MCLA is the largest club sports organization in the country. It is. Yeah, yeah it's, so, it's, it's massive. Why would you not want to be part of this? And and there's some really good talent in it. I would say, yeah. Yeah, what was that story? I think, I don't know if Barstool put it out. No, I think maybe Varsity Club did and they shared it. But they said that there was a there was a girl across that was going to go to Georgia Tech. And she decided, and her whole life was led up to the NCAA lacrosse, right? Georgia, you know, like, going to do that. And then at the last second, she's like, hey, I want to be, um, I want to just, this is where I want my degree in. I don't know if it was nursing or, or whatever, but she goes, this is where I want to focus my life on, but I still want to play lacrosse. And she diverted her whole goal into still playing lacrosse, but in the club level and focusing mm -hmm. on her, her, her degree. And I was like, there's an opportunity that MCLA is shines in this area saying I can be, I can still play ball at a competitive level and to get my degree where I want, maybe go and play at a school. Like what is Wisconsin? I think Wisconsin was a, a school that called him. Um, they sent him a letter and an email and a couple other schools back Probably in high school. Was, I, no, you got some too. They both got calls from the north and like, yeah. hey, and he hates the cold. I'm like, do you want to go play in 30 degrees? Yeah. He's like, no. Yeah. I want to play in San Diego is where I want to go play. You know? well, so, yeah. 
it's you hear you hear all the time like even like i know i think i think jacksonville has a guy that went mcla and now he's with um he's at jacksonville then i know like a south carolina guy is now playing for the man up unit at st john's so like you see this happen all the time and mcla's got real talent and um i think it's just i'm the biggest fan of mcla lacrosse i follow the tournament every single year root on my dayton flyers but like i just want to thank you guys so much for hopping on and just telling you guys a story yeah. No, thanks for, I mean, seriously, Ed, I was worried at first. I'll be honest. No, I was like, don't be. You texted me, you're like, hey, you want to be our podcast? I'm like, I won't, I don't want to be anybody's joke. No, like, no, 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 no. Like, because I was like following the feed and I was like, yeah, bring your 40 mile. Like, I was going to, I think I was going to like, bring your 40 mile an hour fastball and I bet I stop it, is what I was like. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Happy, whatever. So I was like, but listen, I will take hits and it doesn't hurt. You talk about like stacking bruises, they only hurt for a little bit. And I was saying, anyone who wants to play goalie, it's just, it's not as bad as what people like. It's, you know what? You're going to get hit. Like, it just, it, it'll toughen you up, you know? So I don't know. It's, I don't know. You guys play goalie. Was it as bad yeah. as everyone makes it out to be? No. And I just want to say also, it's very like fitting for like, first off, I thought it was very fitting just symbolism wise for like the dad to be the leader and the backstop of the team. But then when I realized that you didn't play goalie before and this is your first time playing in January, <laughs> for, you to, yeah, for you to do like that, I, I love that. And I, I think that that makes your story 10 times cooler for anybody that put out the story originally, like God bless them for because we got to hear it fully, but they should have told everybody that, yeah. that, that you just started playing at 46. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's, that's way first, cooler than anything first else. First field sport. I, I think our you when we played UTD our first game it was the first time he's ever put a mouth guard in. That's so cool to me. That's so cool. Yeah, I yeah. I went back and played uh, in college when I was 24. So during COVID I stopped playing when I was 22. And when I went back as a 24 year old, I felt you know so old, and I was very grateful. It was a lot of fun. I can't imagine how much fun it is for you guys to, to one, be able to play as a father-son duo, coach as a father-son duo, but for you to be picking this up out of the blue and being able to play, you know, as young as you are at 46. And I think that's one of the coolest stories in the world. So as long as I'm around, there'll be, there'll be no jokes for me. I think it's, I think it's one of the coolest. I, I have, uh, I have a lot of, um, my history of getting involved in things is pretty much wing it, you know? So like, if you, there's a lot of things I do in the past, like, Hey, I'm going to try this. I'm like, what? I ran an ultra marathon on a wing, like on a bet. Right. Damn. So, like, <laughs> and like, they were like, I bet you can't. I'm like, I, I said, well, listen to what I told them. This is what I told them. Like you runners are weak because you guys just run around. Like that's all you do. <laughs> You just like you run. How hard is it to run? I'm standing and walking all day. How hard is it to run? And they're like, I bet you couldn't. And I'm like, listen, I got road rash. I've got separated shoulders. I've been doing stuff I shouldn't do. Right. But I said, I bet I could do it. And the closest ultra marathon that was coming up was three months. Right. And they said, you need at least 12 months. I said, I'll do it in three. I did train for a month. I got sick for three weeks, trained for the other month, tapered down and ran a, ran an ultra. It was like, it was 67 miles. Right. Jeez. And I was like, and I texted him. I said, by the way, you guys are still weak. Like <laughs> literally, like, it's not, that, if you, I think if you have a goal and you set your mind to it, you just be like, Hey, this is what I want to do. And you properly, like you pro efficiently and properly train, then you can do it. The best part, I would, and I know you guys probably have to go. I don't, you don't want to spend all day talking to us, but, like, so watch the biggest distraction I have is watching him play. Like <laughs> as the goalie, the, the biggest problem me being goalie is like when I'm here, cause he's midi, right? So he's going to play yeah. downfield in where I'm at is like getting involved in like what he's doing. And as a goalie, if you get distracted from that, <laughs> of like looking at numbers, you have to like, it's not just watch the guy with the ball. It's watch the ball. Right. I don't yeah. like, I don't know what happened. I just know that that ball is there. And so I, the couple times where I've been watching him um, play, I've just been more focused on like I, I get distracted in that instant, right? And then then you're you're going downhill. So I try to do my best for for them because I want them to win too. I told yeah. them in our first practice, man. I'm here for A's and W's, man. Like A's in school, W's here. Like I'm not going to be an embarrassment. I will outwork anybody here at this team. 
And so just to, I want to win. <laughs> yeah, and, and also just a rem- that's a good reminder, student, then athlete, A's yep. and then W's. Yeah, I like that. Well, and you know, as MCLA, you have to be full time. Yeah. Right? I have a career. Like, I didn't like, oh, I get laid off and go back to school. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, I have, I'm in pretty involved in my career and we do things like all the time. My demand for me to do certain things all day could range from, you know, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I like, I have to like, then I have to find a way like, oh, I got to write this essay. And, and I'm over here. I'm like, Hey, will you come help me with this math problem? They both like their second language yeah. is math. Right. So he's like, Hey, come help me with this. It's like, dude, I already done that. He won't help me. He <laughs> <laughs> won't help me anything. Like, All right, I'll just do it. I got my old problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So no, we enjoy being ambassadors. I think all of us with the sport, especially here in Texas, man, if we can get kids involved and, and they like it and, you know, to see the, the, the fun in the sport and it's physical, but you don't necessarily have to like, you know, lose a knee. Right. In the MCLA in Texas, it's very physical. We, we had three broken sticks (laughs) last weekend. Yeah. Three broken sticks last weekend. And busted helmet. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a pretty, that was, that was probably the most fun I've ever had losing. It, it, I, yeah, I mean, I can imagine down in Texas, it's a bunch of people playing, like football players that didn't play in college that are just mashing each other yeah. down yeah. there. I mean, and when well, you find, like, MCLA, you find a lot of guys from up north who've played a lot, like, yeah. do come down of here. Course. At the high school yeah. level, yeah, it's a lot of football players, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even, like, down here in lacrosse. That's where... Like, that's where we shine, right? You're like, we get physical, yeah. Yeah. and those guys are like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. like I'm just trying to get the ball from you. Like, they don't yeah. know. Yeah. They don't like. In pra- I got hurt in practice. And they're like, oh, sorry, pops. And like, why are you one? Why are you sorry? Like, this is I signed up for this, but you now it's the it's the most money I've ever signed up to be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> if you're from, and this is just for my listeners out there, if you're from the Texas area thinking about playing club lacrosse. I hope this conversation could steal you guys to encourage you guys to play. This is your freshman. I hope it gets you reinvolved with lacrosse. If you're in the Texas area, go play for UNT because I can't think of three better ambassadors right. for the game. So go yeah, check them we'll, out. Man, we'll put you, no experience. That's what that goalie post said, right? It yeah, said no, no experience needed. On the like, They were recruiting a goalie the day before, and I told him, like, dude, I thought that was my spot. He goes, everyone has to try out. <laughs> like, I have no nepotism here. Yeah. They're not. They're not <laughs> he doesn't slow down his shots on me, and and he doesn't give me any slack. And so I have to work hard. And nepotism reverse. I have to work twice as hard as everybody. Because like he, oh, you you, you dialing me off? No. See? No, you he should be harder. Oh no, yeah, you get okay. him in while you get him in while you can. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I never grounded him. So. <laughs> yeah. maybe next practice you will yeah. well, I just want to thank you guys for taking the time for this interview I think the people thank are really going to enjoy this I know that we did good luck at practice today by the way I hope you uh, get the ice ready because maybe Ethan's going to rip some at the shins he's the, he's the worst yeah, <laughs> sorry I'm, I got less yeah 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 All right, well, thank you guys appreciate it yeah. thanks guys thanks, we'll guys. see you around I, I'll, I'll look forward to listening to more yeah thank you that was the interview with Rory, Wes, and Ethan. Like we said before, this was re- recording before that we got this done. So I already know that was the best interview we did or top two interview that we did this year, along with McCabe Millen. So congrats to McCabe Millen and Rory Sanders and Ethan Wes, tied for top two interview we've done this so far this year. Um, let's dive into a little bit of the games this weekend, Ness, why don't we? Let's do it. All right. Looking over at the weekend, we got some – a lineup. We got one Friday game, UMBC Richmond, that we will not touch on. But there is one program that I want to touch on. What do you think the hardest job in lacrosse is right now? The hardest job in lacrosse? Hardest job to succeed. I don't fucking know. Um I think it might be St. John's. They're getting their dick kicks in, dicks kicked in. Like it feels like every fucking game. Every fucking game. They're like lost 24 to 7 to um, Jacksonville last week, and it, it's like St. John's, NGIT. Like, St. John's used to be good for a couple of years with Kieran McArdle, but like, just one of those jobs that they just, I feel like, will never, ever succeed. And, like, that conference, the Big East, just they'll always be bottling a barrel. 
they play Binghamton. It's just a game that I'm like gonna watch. My friends been texting me about St. John's, so that's a game I'm personally eyeing down. But as a look at the schedule, Maryland Brown, they get things started. What's uh, there's no lines really right now for the games on Wednesday, so we'll just talk about general. That, that line, around. that line's gonna be fucking huge. Yeah, I would guess it's gonna be around the nine and a half, eight and a half um, yeah. range. It's also Maryland at home. What's your prediction? Uh, Maryland rolls. I'm a big believer in really good teams losing. Uh, not going to happen twice in a row. Brown might be on a three-game skid. Could be four. Um, maybe they snuck a win in there, and, we, and I didn't notice it. But Brown's in the gutter right now, like we mentioned before. Uh, no disrespect to the Brown boys, but you know I think Maryland's going to roll them this weekend. That They're going to come in pretty pissed off after that beatdown from Notre Dame. Yeah, I agree. I think Maryland's just going to – Beat Brown, I don't know by how much, but I think they're just going to beat Brown. I uh, don't think Brown's very good. I think they just lost a shit ton of pieces that they're still struggling to get back. Probably a young team. Again, we're going to we're going to need whatever happens in this game. I think next week we're going to lock lock in Mark and Kemp to give a, a state of the union on Brown. I think it's necessary. I think that all those Brown supporters deserve that. Yeah. Then we got our first major Ivy tilt. Like, oh no, that's not an Ivy tilt. Why do I fucking just think this is an Ivy tilt? I know no fucking <laughs> what the fuck. Penn State hey. Cornell. Feels like an Ivy tilt. In your yeah, defense, in your defense, Penn is an Ivy, so right. Penn, just, Penn just, State at home against Cornell. Uh, Penn State coming out of it, off that OT win against Yale. Who you got? Taking CJ yeah. CJ Curse and the Cornell boys. He's he's special. Uh, he showed it last week against Ohio State. Um, you know, if, if Penn State's really about it, that they'll they'll shove it in my face and the rest of the across the world's face and they'll come in and beat Cornell. Uh, I, I think those are two re- two of the top 10, top 15 teams in the country. And um, I think that'll be a real good game to watch. I'd love, I'd love to have uh, eyes on that one, 12 o'clock on Saturday, but I'm rolling with Cornell. Yeah. That's going on my top TV. I think that uh, I'm very intrigued for that one, just to see who's also, I'm going to look at some injuries for Cornell, but some of those like core guys they have like Hugh Kelleher, um, you got and like CJ Curse, I love to watch. Then they got some Garden City boys that I think are going to step up in their sophomore year. So just going to see where they are at injury wise for a pick. But for now, I'm going to take Penn State in that one. Uh, I think TJ Malone is going to be at, at the end of the season at Tawarton nominee in the top five, top four. So I think depending on injuries, I'm taking Penn State in that one. NJIT versus Lindenwood. Lindenwood is the Cabrini of D1. No more program after this year. So I just have to assume that you're t- rolling with them to take down NJIT. Uh, tough spot. I'm a Jersey boy, but there seems to be a little bit of a connection between Lindenwood and Cabrini. So I'm going to pull – I'll take them spread. Whatever it comes out at, I'm taking the spread. Uh, I think NJIT wins, but I'm going to I'm gonna put my money as a Cabrini faithful on Lindenwood. I'm actually 1-0 and on Lindenwood spread bets this year. So load up your DraftKings, put everything you got on Lindenwood. They'll be get they'll be getting goals 100. percent Yeah, I'm gonna ride the Highlanders in this one. Have to Frank the Tanks. Frank the Tanks invested. I'm invested. NJIT. Oh, and then maybe sprinkle money line if Frank the Tanks officially invested. Maybe Lindenwood money line. It could be, it could be the downfall of NJIT, and that's no disrespect to Frank. Just you know, history. history. He's a little disrespectful to Frank. No, no, no disrespect. He's he, he's he's the king. So I I, I respect I respect Frank. Oh. All disrespect to Frank. <laughs> Notre Dame at Ohio State. Who you got on that one? I think Notre Dame. I'll take this one first. I think Notre Dame's. I think Notre Dame rolls. I think yeah. that they're now on, on a mission. I think they got the loss out of the way. I think they are on a mission. I think they absolutely roll. I don't think it matters where they play. I don't think there's really that much of a home field advantage when you're going from South Bend to Columbus. I don't think the travel affects you that much. Give me Notre Dame every which way. Yeah, I'm with you. We'll ride that one together. Um, I'll be on Notre Dame almost almost every week. They got Chatham boy on the roster, so you know I me. Mean? I got my Cougars hat, but no, they're they're pissed, so they're gonna come out and beat the shit out of them. They're still pissed. You got an inter Philly uh, matchup here. Penn visiting Villanova. You think Penn comes on top of this one, or does Nova have some uh, gas in the tank to? Uh, I don't even know if this would be considered an upset, but in my head it is. So let's go with yeah, that. I think Nova's gonna be getting some goals here. Um, it's tough. I'll take Nova. I mean, you know, I like taking Penn last weekend, but I, I don't have any like allegiance with Penn. I don't, again, I don't, I'm not sleeping on them, but 
I don't know if they, if there's a spread and it's two three goals. I, I think I'm going to lead Nova there. You know, maybe Penn wins, but I think Nova keeps it close for sure. They got they got a pretty good D down there uh, across the street from Cabrini University. Yeah, I think it's Penn. Uh, just to win. I don't know the spread yet. It's so weird talking about these games without spread now because we've been doing yeah. it for so long. Like, yeah, but I I think Penn wins. I, I just why? Because I just it's literally got on my knees and glazed Lavelle, and I fucking love James Shipley's game. He's so clutch. So watch James Shipley sneak by a game winner like he's done all his career. Um, Duke visiting Loyola. Beautiful. So this is gonna be a beautiful matchup visually. Three thirty. Just I love Ridley Complex. Uh, seeing those two like. The Duke, the Duke blue at Ridley is just a sight to be seen. It's going to be on like the front of Pornhub after the game on Saturday because Brennan O'Neill is going to splooge all over this defense and he's going to smack his dick all over this field. Duke's going to win by 10. <laughs> I'll ride Duke with you. I, I love it. That That's a good breakdown right there, Duke. They do have Grayson Saladay who like could be Brennan O'Neill's kryptonite, but like I don't think that they're going to match him up as, with a short stick on Brennan O'Neill. I don't think they have the balls, to be honest. I don't think Tooby's got that in this game. So I'm going to take Brennan O'Neill. Uh, I think Dyson Williams is a bounce back. I think McAdory is a fucking stud. Go on about Denanza. I think Aiden McGuire is one of, like, an up-and-coming player. So I don't know. I think Duke is probably talent-wise up to down the best, but they're not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I can't buy myself into Duke. I'm trying to buy myself into being like Duke will win the national championship, but I just can't get it out of my own now. I, I listen, I, I think they have the capabilities. I think everything, blah, blah, blah. I just think it's something, you know, something in the water down there that, that they're just not going to pull it off. If I'm bet, a bet man, I'm not betting on Duke to win it. One, cause there's, there's just no real value. And two, they just haven't I, – I don't think they proved that they can get over that last hump, that last game, just finish the job. Had the best player in the world for three years. You know, he's one of one. He, he's a little different than a lot of the guys we talk about, mostly because he's fucking ginormous. But t- potential game of the weekend Saturday night, are we are we ready to call it that? The the one that we're about to talk about? Oh, yeah, game of the weekend, Syracuse at uh, – Hopkins at Syracuse at the Dome. Who you got? Syracuse is also like 0-2. So Syracuse is 0-2 in overtime games. Joey Spelina's hearing some heat. Joey Spelina responded back. Hopkins is rolling. Hopkins is hearing all this like little chatter. They're the best team in the country. They deserve to be number one. Syracuse wins. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Christian Mulay had a uh, beautiful speech in the post game talking about like people going after Joey Spleen and how it's unfair because it is. It's like you, when you shut down the best player, it opens up everything else for the entire team. It's yeah. totally true. It's the right way to look at the game. It's not always about the points. Like, does it come nice? Do, do the points come nice when it's like in the tour ton chatter? Sure, because a lot all these guys draw number ones. But I, I think that you know, for a young guy like Joey to know that Christian Mulay has his back, huge. Um, but I have Syracuse. I don't even know if it's going to be like, I don't know what the spread is, money line. I don't know if they're going to be underdogs, whatnot, money line. I love, 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 love Syracuse in this one. Yeah, I think I think Houston is going to be a home team. Or Who's home here? Is this down in Homewood? No, I think it's at Cuse. It's yeah, up, it's up in Cuse. So I think there'll be a home team dog. Um, I wouldn't be against betting on a money line there. Uh, I've kind of been in Hopkins' corner, so I might just have to stick with it. That's just going to be a heavy matchup. I'd love to see Spelina, you know, put up some big points against a big team. But I'm with you uh, when it comes to the superstar on the team like Joey, who gets all the attention. Um, I don't think you can knock him for games where he doesn't have five goals and two assists. Um, he's always going to find a way to get a point on the board, whether it's one way or the other. It's just sort of what he does. But when you're getting locked off and you have the best defender on the team covering you, you know, shit's going to open. People are sliding you early, whatnot. So I'm with you. I think Mule sticking up for his boy there. Is, you love to see that. You're a sophomore on the team, you know, kind of the face of the squad. But, you know, you're certainly not the oldest. So it's always cool to have, you know, grad transfers and older guys have your back. It, I know it feels good for Joey. So still sort of a Spelina podcast, at least on my end. But we're officially a McCabe Millen podcast. But shout out, Joey. Up on. Then we got Sunday, March 10th, 12 p.m. Harvard visiting Michigan. I like Harvard. I think that Jerry Burns one of the best coaches. I think that like this will be a year that they kind of figure it out. I think there'll be a test in the uh, the Ivy League. I think that this and next year will be the years that we kind of see a, a Harvard coming out party. I think that they had a young team the past couple of years. I think that they're going to come back stronger. 
Um, Mich Michigan just got a win, I want to say, against Delaware. Um, my, my, my weed brain is just fried. I don't even know if they're like. Yeah, just beat Delaware 13 8. Okay, yes. But I think yeah. Harvard's, Harvard's, unde Harvard's undefeated. Uh, I think that they keep this going. I like them to beat Michigan. Yeah, I'll ride Harvard with you there. I think they got a solid ass squad. Watch out for them. Watch out for the Crimson. Yeah. I think Sam King is a bona fide stud. Um, I don't know if you have anything to touch on Princeton Rutgers. Anything you have in there from the Jersey angle? I don't really have much to say. I think Rutgers wins that one. Uh, I'll ride Princeton. My grandpa's a Princeton guy. I choose yeah. teams on loyalty. Um, but when 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 the littlest curse ends up in Rutgers next year, I'll be I'll be back bleeding red with the Rutgers boys. But I don't know. I fuck with Princeton. I'll take them. I, I love that Nate Kabiri kid. Yeah, um, Colton McKeezy too. I fucking yeah. love on. I just love watching Raw Scott on. Uh, on yeah, Rutgers. I mean, uh, no buck. I love. Um, only loss really on the year has been Army. So I don't know. Rutgers just quietly, quietly not as bad as like it were not. You know, I think people think that Rutgers is in a huge down year. This is a big spot to get a big win. And then final game we'll talk about Yale visiting Denver, the number one team in the country. Who you got? I like Yale. Game, this is the game of the year. I like Yale. Yeah. I love Yale. I love it. I, Bounce back. Yeah. Hungry dogs run faster against the number one team in Denver. I think the boys are going to get up for this one. I think Brandon Al has a field day. I think this we're seeing eye to eye in this one. Uh, we might have to get on something together there. But, yeah, I like Yale money line. I'm sure they'll be getting points. I'll take those as well. Um, and this is a really good chance, though, for Denver to say, listen, you know, we might not have the prettiest wins, but if we can come out and have wins against Hopkins, Yale, and be undefeated on the year and hold that number one spot for more than a week, then all of a sudden people got to start putting just a little bit more respect on Denver's name. So if you're the Denver boys, this is a big one to show up to. All right, that's really all we got right now. Uh, I kind of have to go. I'm, I'm heading over to another show that I have right now. Nestor's going to the Gabrini game. We're kind of running around. We got an interview to fit in. It's been a busy day. We're just trying to give you guys the podcast. We want to give you guys the information. We want to give you guys the entertainment. Uh, next next week will be locked and loaded. I will personally text Larkin Kemp to get him on next week. Uh, we'll be getting more guests throughout the year. I think that um, I've been talking to some people. I'm not going to. I'm, I was about to release some names, but no, we'll do some interviews. We'll get some guests next week. We'll hopefully get Larkin Kemp locked in, uh, no matter the results against Maryland Brown. But uh, remember, follow us, subscribe, uh, like this video, like this podcast, subscribe to this podcast, subscribe to this video, follow Nestler. Nestler, do you have a curse of the week or anything? Or are you good this week? Quick, quick curse of the week. I'll, <clears throat> I'll release a personal video. Uh, honorable mentions. We got Nate Kabiri out of Princeton. Uh, we got Cabrini Lacrosse bringing out a win, beating the shit out of Widener by 12. Suck it, Widener, assistant coach. Um, Joe Donnelly, uh, don't, don't ever play for him. Yeah, don't – Go to Widener, but make sure he's not there. Uh, third, honorable, honorable mention, TJ Malone. Unbelievable performance for Penn State. Um, but this one's easy. First curse of the week for this man, CJ, motherfucking cursed. Seven goals, one assist. He's a bucket. He's here. Uh, if you don't know the name by now, you're watching the wrong sport. Love you guys. Let's go Cabrini, baby. Thanks, guys. We'll be back next week.